Hello everybody, welcome to this session of maths. Today, we are going to study about trigonometric ratios. In the previous session, we studied about uh, how to identify a right angle triangle in real life situation. And we uh, also studied what is the meaning of trigonometry. In this session, we are going to go forward with something called as trigonometric ratios. Before we all begin with trigonometric ratios, we need to understand certain terms related to trigonometric ratios. So, when we talk about a right angle triangle, okay, we say that this is the 90 degree. Let us assume that this is theta or this is the angle which we are talking about. So, in relation to this triangle, what is the ratio of the sides of this triangle it is called as trigonometric ratios. Again, I will repeat again, what is a trigonometric ratio? Trigonometric ratios are nothing but ratios of the sides of the triangle with respect to any particular angle, any particular acute angle of the right angle. Right? So, let us consider that I am going to talk about this particular angle which is theta. Everything related to this angle in respect to the sides of the triangle is what we are going to talk now. Now, uh, in the right angle triangle, you have previously studied that the longest side is called as the hypotenuse. Right? The longest side of the triangle is called as the hypotenuse. Now, theta is over here. This side is actually opposite of theta, meaning it is not touching angle or it is not making an angle theta. So, it is another, it is it's the angle, it is the side which is not relevant to theta at all. Therefore, this side is called as the opposite side. Remember, previously, in previous classes, we had studied that this is the perpendicular, right? Now, the same perpendicular has become opposite with respect to this angle. Because this side is opposite to angle, we call it as an opposite side, right? What will be this side called then? If this is the opposite, what will this side call? Theta is on the side of this. So, this particular line is called as the adjacent, adjacent side, right? So, we need to remember these three sides of the triangle. These three sides are responsible uh, with respect to this theta only, correct? Now, let me give you another chance. Let us say I have this as alpha, correct? If I have alpha, what will this side be? Correct. This side is going to become opposite. Isn't it? Because this side is opposite of alpha. So, this side becomes opposite. Similarly, this side, this side will become adjacent. and the hypotenuse remains untouched. Is that clear to you? So, hypotenuse remains untouched because it is the longest side of the triangle, but the side will be called opposite or adjacent depending on the angle that we are talking about, right? We will use this information to find the trigonometric ratios. So, for the time being, I am not considering alpha, but I am going to consider only theta. Right? So, once we know how many trigonometric ratios are there, there are basically six trigonometric ratios, but these six, six trigonometric ratios can be understood when we know the three basic trigonometric ratios. Once we know these three basic trigonometric ratios, automatically these six ratios will be very, very clear to us. Right? Let us see, what is the first trigonometric ratio? The first trigonometric ratio is called as 
साइन राइट साइन ऑफ एन एंगल और साइन थीटा ओवर यो इज डिफाइन एज द ऑपोजिट साइन अपॉन द हाइपोटेन्यूस द साइन ऑफ एन एंगल इज डिफाइंड एज ऑपोजिट अपॉन द हाइपोटेन्यूस राइट इन दिस राइट एंगल ट्रायंगल लेट मी कंसीडर दिस एज ए दिस इज बी एंड दिस इज सी राइट so sin of an angle is defined as opposite upon hypotenuse over here so what will be opposite opposite is ab upon hypotenuse is ac right second ratio is called as the cos second ratio is called as the cos what is cos theta defined as cos theta is defined as adjacent upon hypotenuse right so what is its adjacent adjacent of theta is bc and what is the hypotenuse ac so cos theta is going to be bc upon ac that is the cos theta cos ratio and the last one of the basics is tan theta tan theta is defined as opposite upon adjacent right so what is opposite upon adjacent over here opposite is ab and adjacent is bc so tan theta is opposite upon adjacent which is ab upon bc right you have to memorize this whole thing you have to know this these three trigonometric ratio by heart right now i am going to give you a shortcut i am going to give you a shortcut for this for memorizing this right how do you memorize this you make a mnemonics what's a mnemonic shortcut short form so i'm taking this s i'm taking this o and i'm taking this h so it becomes so i'm taking this c i'm taking this a and i'm taking this h and i'm taking this t i'm taking this o i'm taking this a so the best trigonometric ratio the best way to remember the three basic trigonometric ratios is sokatoa what is it sokatoa okay so ka toa right what is so so is sine is opposite upon hypotenuse ka is cos is adjacent upon hypotenuse toa is tan is opposite upon adjacent clear is this clear so this is our baseline for all the trigonometric ratio soca toa once we know soca toa it will be easier for us to do the remaining three right let's see what are the remaining three first one was sin okay so 1 upon sin 1 upon cos One upon tan. Right? We had sine for so here. We had cos for ka here, and we had tan for to here. Remember? What I did was I just took a reciprocal of this. Right? What happens when I say sine theta? What was sine theta? Remember? O H. So when I say One upon sine theta it becomes reciprocal. It means it becomes hypotenuse upon opposite. This one was adjacent upon hypotenuse, so it becomes hypotenuse upon adjacent, and this becomes adjacent upon opposite. Right? This is the ratio for the inverse the reciprocals. One upon sine theta. in another word 
is called as cosec theta. 1 upon cos theta is called as the sec theta. And 1 upon tan is called as the cot theta. So once you know Sokatoa, automatically you know cosec sec cot also. So this is the way you have to remember the six trigonometric ratios. Is this clear? One more point that I wanted to bring to your attention was that sometimes, you know, in some problems we will encounter where we will say sine square. You want to say sine square theta. So ideally this is the way we should write. Correct? This is the way we should write. But normally we write sine square theta as this way. Okay. So this is same as sine square theta. Right? So sine square theta is written like this traditionally and it is accepted everywhere. But okay, is sine theta raised to minus 1 same as sine raised to minus 1 theta? Is, is this the same as this? No. This is not the same. Correct? This particular sign, which is sign minus 1 raised to theta, okay, is called as sign inverse. Okay. So, I just want to bring to your attention that this is something called as sign inverse. Sometimes we will have to use this sign inverse for solving problems. Right. So, this is called as the inverse function. Similarly, this can be cos inverse. They can be tan inverse, so on and so forth, right? So let's recapitulate what have we studied so far. We studied three trigonometric ratios. From the three trigonometric ratios, we derived another three. So in total, we have seen six trigonometric ratios, right? So we have studied what is the meaning of trigonometry. We have studied uh, how to identify a right angle triangle in real life situation. We have seen what are the six trigonometric ratios. We have seen what is the meaning of an inverse of a trigonometric ratio. Right. So in the next session, we are going to use these trigonometric ratios for certain angles. Like what is going to be angle sine 30? What is going to be cos 30? What is going to be tan 30? So on and so forth. So, in the next session, we will do that. Till then, a very good bye.